I have to know that this is what you want to do. If you're not happy, there's no point in doing anything because then the most important thing is you being happy. That's when you get the best results. You work better when you're happy. So always, always do stuff that makes you happy. Issa is just turned 26. I have a very, 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 very big interest in the entertainment sector in general. Um, I was born in Ibadan. I lost my mom when I was seven, so I moved to Lagos um, a year later. Um, I tell people all the time, I was like, if I feel as if, if my mom was alive, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now because my mom was really strict. Um, one of my, it's a fun story now. One of my funniest stories is me trying to run away from doing my lessons one day. And my mom caught me, caught me walking out of the house. <clears throat> she gave me the thr thrashing of my life. It, was, it wasn't funny then, but obviously now it's really funny. Um, my, parents are, my, my family and my parents have always been supportive of everything I've done. So even when I was, when I said this is what I wanted to do, there wasn't anybody saying, no, you can't do this or you can't do that. So I think I've been really opportune to have a, a childhood to die for. I say, like if I, had to, if, I, if I had to choose this, I'd probably do it the same way again. I'd, I wouldn't change my family for anything. Growing up, I wanted to be an anthropologist till I was about 16, 17. Um, my uncle used to own one of the biggest record labels in Nigeria at that point in time, and I had no idea. I just knew I had this really cool uncle who lived in Lagos because I used to live in Ibadan then. I got properly involved in the entertainment industry business-wise. I'd say in 2006. Um, my cousin Nito had just put out um, his first single, Sitting on Top. So I was, the, I was the young guy at that point in time. So I was the one who was like promoting his music amongst the guys in secondary schools and universities. That's, pretty, that's how pretty much how I got involved. I pretty much got properly involved because of Nito and my uncle's record label. I was pretty lucky with challenges in the sense that when I started doing this, I was working for my uncle and my uncle had a very good reputation and was respected in this industry. So that opened a lot of doors for me. So I didn't have that initial getting on your feet challenge that most people have in their chosen paths. Um, I did have other challenges. I always had to face that issue of who is this small boy to be like, it's a go. I'll be in a room with four guys that are 45 years old and then I'm 16, 17 there and they're like, who the hell is this guy? So that was it. That was my major, major issue, the whole who is this young guy, young guy thing. But eventually, like, I think my work spoke for itself. I was good at what I did and people realized that and they're like, okay, this guy's here to stay. Um, working behind the scenes in the entertainment industry, I mean, you know how they say, um, do what you love and you never have to work a day in your life. Like, I enjoy what I do, so I do have those mornings. This morning was one of them where I didn't want to get out of bed. But I don't, I rarely have that issue where like, I'm like, oh, I have to go and do this. I enjoy what I do. Like, another thing for me is I'm really um, picky about what I do and what I don't do, who I work with, who I don't work with. That's because I'm the kind of person when I do get into something, I give it 200% and it's really obvious and I'm not really good at faking. So when I'm not interested in something or I don't want to do something, you know, so I'd rather just not be in that predicament. So from people I've managed to brands I've worked with, it's always been that way. A lot of people inspire me. Um, Rick Rubin, one of the co-founders of Def Jam. He was, he was the president of Columbia Records at a point. He's been involved in some of the most successful albums in loads of different genres from rock to country to hip hop. Recruiting definitely. Um, Ellie Reed, uh, Russell Simmons, because Russell Simmons is definitely someone who I've seen that's been able to monetize his lifestyle, which is something I do to an extent. And then there's Boo. Who else do I look up to? My uncle Obi, definitely. Um, a few people I've worked with too. Um, Tola, Tola Odunsi, definitely look up to him. I mean, we're still breaking records now. This is just the first one that is in a book. 
if it's in terms of records, I can quote a few other records that I've been involved in, but it's really cool, it's dope. I think um, if you want to get involved in the entertainment industry, first of all, it's a business. People look at, watch MTV and be like, oh my God, I want to live this kind of life, I want to do this, but they don't know the process behind all that kind of stuff. So it's the kind of thing that, with, if you're going to be a doctor, you have to know that, okay, someone's going to call me at 9 o'clock, there's an accident on the road, we need to operate on this guy. One thing with entertainment industry, and like my job, for example, is there are no hours. For all you know, we'll be DJing at somewhere at 2 a.m. in the morning. We're going to the airport from there to land in another country to do another gig. So you have to want it. You, want, you have to know that this is what you want to do. If you're not happy, there's no point in doing anything. Because then the most important thing is you being happy. That's when you get the best results. You work better when you're happy. So always, always definitely be used. So do stuff that makes you happy. Thank you.